Okay, so here we are inside of Adobe Lightroom, and we actually have multiple photos to work with this time. So we are actually going to be blending these together. Now, you're gonna notice throughout this series that I'm going to be using different RAW processors. So this one is Adobe Lightroom. In the last lesson, we were using On One Photo RAW, and I'll explain why I'm switching back and forth between these. So the reason why we're gonna be using Lightroom inside of this lesson is because Lightroom has a way of blending all these photos together uh, inside of Lightroom before we get into Photoshop. Now, that's not my favorite way of doing things, but we're gonna remember, these lessons are getting progressively harder, and with this photo, this actually is the proper way to do it. I would probably just blend it this way instead of go through the process of manually blending it later, because Lightroom actually does a really good job with certain photos. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just run through the photos and show you what we're working with here. So this is our medium exposure that came out of the camera. So this is the one that the camera meter said was correct for the scene. This is our underexposed image, which gathers all the detail in the sky for us. And then here's our overexposed image, which of course digs out the detail from all the shadows here. Now, when I was actually here at this little bamboo forest trail at a uh, national park by my house, uh, it was very, very dark down in the forest uh, by the trail. And then of course, as you got you know further up the bamboo trees here and you get closer to the sky, it gets really bright. So this was a very tricky lighting situation. So that's why in this situation, it was very beneficial to me to capture the bracketed images so that it really helps the final result uh, get a very nice and even exposure here. Okay, so before we blend the photos, let's just do some, some basic work on them here. So the first thing I like to do to my photos inside of Lightroom is to go and remove chromatic aberrations. We'll enable profile corrections, which is basically just gonna take the distortion out of the lens in the camera profile. So if I flick that off and on, you'll see it just correct the distortion there. And this was actually taken on my old Canon 1DS Mark III camera, because I took this picture a couple of years ago. Um, and then of course I'm also going to kill the sharpening here. Uh, now, I've mentioned this uh, before, that I hate the sharpening that comes standard inside of RAW processors. Um, Lightroom has really bad sharpening, in my opinion. Capture One is a little better. The only one that I really leave the sharpening on is On One Photo RAW. They actually have a really clean sharpener that is okay to process to your RAW files before you get into Photoshop. But it's going to be different with every photo, so just play around with it and you do what works for you. So. In this case, I'm gonna kill the sharpening and just uh, remove the chromatic aberrations and of course enable the profile corrections. So I'm gonna, I want that applied to every single photo here. So I'm just gonna hold shift and select all the photos. Go here and click sync. So that way we're gonna sync all the settings. I will choose check all and synchronize. And that's just gonna sync all those settings that I just made, just those couple of changes to all three photos. So now that we have all three of these selected, I'm gonna go to the first one here and just right click on the photo. I'm gonna go up here to Photo Merge, and we'll choose HDR. And that's gonna open up a little dialog box here inside of Lightroom. And what this basically does is it uses Lightroom's algorithm to basically blend these exposures together for you. So it evaluates the light, and it just spits out a copy of all these images into one layer, or one single image. So I'm just gonna use the Auto Align feature, and we will choose Low on the deghosting, and if you wonder what deghosting is, it's basically um, in between exposures. If you have something in the photo that's moving, so for example, here I took three brackets, and if it was a really windy day, well then some of those leaves in between brackets might be blowing, you know, in a different direction. So that way, when you blend the exposures, the leaves might be, a, you know, might be at different points uh, in the photo. So the higher you go on deghosting, it, it just basically tries to correct that and line the leaves up better, or anything, people or whatever may be moving. Um, I find that it doesn't really work very well, so I always just leave it on low, and then I'll fix any issues later in Photoshop. So we're gonna do just that. Leave it in low, check the auto align box, and click merge. And of course it's gonna create an HDR for us. Like I said, it's gonna create a copy of all three of these images and just spit it into one single file that gives us all of that light data to play with. So that's what's really cool about this. So here we go, now we have four photos. This fourth one here is actually named HDR, you can see. And this has all of the light data from all of these three photos built into this one file. So if we go up here to the highlights and shadows, now this one file can get those really detailed highlights out of that dark file and dig the shadows out of the bright file. 
So I hardly ever crank the highlights all the way down and boost the shadows all the way up. But since this is an HDR file, I'm actually gonna do that on this one. And before we get into Photoshop, I'm gonna add just a couple of other little, you know, just some basic processing. We'll add a little bit of contrast, not much. Uh, let's go down here. And I like to add some dehaze, which is just a nice way to recover some highlights and add some contrast at the same time. So we'll add maybe 25% of dehaze. And now from here, we just wanna get this into Photoshop so we can continue the post-production. So there's a million ways you can get this file into Photoshop. One of the easiest ways is to just select the photo and hit Command E on your keyboard. And if you hit Command E, it will automatically open up Photoshop and throw that file right in there for you to work with. So again, this is gonna take you know, different amounts of time based on what kind of computer you have for the processing speed. And then here, it might not do this to you, but I work in different color profiles sometimes, so I'm just gonna choose use the embedded profile, but this dialog box probably won't pop up for you. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of my Nick collection box here. Okay, so here we have the photo, and if you remember from last lesson, the first thing I like to do is to make a duplicate of my photo so that I have a clean file to work with on the bottom. So let's hit Command J, and we'll name this, because we want to stay organized here, we'll name this LR HDR Original. So that stands for Lightroom HDR Original. And I'm just going to turn that off. The way, that way I always have that original to go back to for reference in case I want to see if I've gone too far or maybe I did something that I didn't like and I want to refer back to the original. So then we'll name this one LR HDR because this is the one we're actually gonna be working with and changing things around. So the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, because now we're kind of in step three of my workflow, is the distraction removal. And I don't really think there's any dust spots on the sensor here, but I wouldn't really be able to tell anyway because there's just <laughs> there's so much going on here in the image. Uh, so I'm gonna just choose my spot healing brush. And the only thing I wanna change, I wanna zoom in. If you hit uh, Command plus sign, you can zoom in on your image. You hold the space bar and it brings up this hand and you can just drag across the image. So the only distractions I'm gonna get rid of are some of the little light leaks here in between the bamboo trees, uh, just on the bottoms or the corners of the photo. I just don't want them leaking into the bottom of the corners. Because I, since I do a lot of printing, I know that the very edges of the photo can be very distracting if you don't you know, treat them correctly. So that one's not doing a very good job. So if you can't do something with the spot healing brush, you can always grab the clone stamp tool over here and what's nice about this is if you hold option, you can sample from, a, from another part of the image, and then you can go over here and just paint that right in. So we'll just do something like that. Okay, um, let's make it look a little more realistic. We'll grab some of this up here. We'll just paint that in, we'll grab some of this, paint it in. You can just choose option and keep sampling from other portions and painting it over. Now we'll hop back to our spot healing brush and look for some other areas, just small areas like this. Okay, this little area on the edge here. Let's travel up the photo. Just, uh, basically, like I said, I'm just making sure the edges don't have these little light leaks because that can just be a, kind of a weird distraction sometimes. I'll just tidy that one up. Okay, let's go down to the bottom here and take a look. Um, let's cover this up. We'll just do some of this. Okay, we'll cover this up on the bottom. Same thing here, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Normally I would fast forward through all this, but since this is a full tutorial here, I don't want to pause anything. I want to take you through my actual thought process of what I'm doing step by step. So feel free to pause this and or, or fast forward this if you want to, because I might spend the next couple of minutes just getting rid of some of this stuff. Because it's, it doesn't, you know, it seems like unnecessary busy work right now, but you know, when you come, when it comes time to posting this in your portfolio, or selling it as a print or as a licensed image, all this, these little details really pay off. So of course you can see all these little spots and stuff on the bamboo trees. I don't really have to get rid of those because that's just natural stuff. But you know, along the way, if I see a, sp a particular spot that annoys me, I'll just scrub over it because the spot healing brush is just so easy to do that. You can just brush right over something and it'll get rid of whatever you want. Okay. So there you go, I think just a couple of those little light leak areas are good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Command-0 on my keyboard and that will just get us back to a full screen here. Okay, and the next step is, I'm actually going to create another duplicate. Now I don't normally do this, but I'll tell you why in just a second. So let's go ahead and create another duplicate. 
And the reason why is because I'm about to use a filter that actually changes the layer. It doesn't create a separate layer with the effect on it. So uh, if you guys remember in last lesson when I used the Nick Collection Color Effects Pro, whenever I would, let's say, you know, use this layer here to do the effect, it would create a second layer for me with that effect on it. But this effect I'm about to use does not do that. So I have to create my own duplicate so I can keep this working layer intact. So let's use the duplicate up here and I'm gonna hop into Filters, Nick Collection, and HDR Effects Pro. Now, while that's opening, you might wonder why I'm using HDR Effects Pro when I've already merged all the files into an HDR. So HDR Effects Pro inside the Nick Collection is really just a series of presets that, that adds you know, certain effects to the image. So it's kind of a preset contrast and brightness and color. And so I like to play around with these sometimes to just enhance little portions of the image locally. I very rarely just use a global preset to the entire image, but some of these can be really beneficial to the final result. Okay, so here we are inside of HDR Effects Pro, and you can see on the left-hand side here, there's a lot of different presets. If you click them, it'll just load it and show you what it'll look like. Uh, a lot of them are like this really, you know, grungy, druggy HDR effect, and this is kind of what gave HDR a bad name, is all these little, like, unrealistic animated look. And that don't, you know, it almost looks like an animated video game cover or something. So we want more of a subtle effect. Um, let's see, what, what do I want to do here? I'm going to scroll down until I find one that I like. Uh, let's see how this looks. Okay, that doesn't look very good. Let's hear, how about this one? It's called Soft. Ooh, okay, I like that. So, this one's called Soft, and immediately what I'm noticing is I really like what it's doing to the top portion of the image. How it's kind of enhancing the light and making it a little blurry um, and not quite as sharp. So I think that's gonna work well for this image because uh, I think I'm just going to apply it to maybe the top third of the image here. Uh, just to where the, the sky is kind of leaking in through the trees. So if you go over here, you can actually tweak the preset, which we probably don't have to do, but let's just see what, what it does if we play with the tone compression. You can, all, you can, of course, add detail if you want, which, you know, that's just making everything way too sharp. So I'm going to go back to that being soft. Um, let's see. So I don't think we have to do too much. I kind of like the preset as it is. So let's go ahead and choose this soft preset. We'll click OK to lock that in. And again, in just a second here, you'll see why I had to create a duplicate because it, it doesn't create its own layer. See, it just affected this layer. So now I have my HDR effects layer and my original here. That's why I created two duplicates. So uh, as you can see, like I said just a minute ago, I don't really want it on the whole image. I think I just want it on the top portion here. Um, and I don't want 100% of it. I just want enough to be subtle with the light. I like, I like the effect it's giving on the light here. It, it, it's really enhancing the way the sun kind of dapples in on the trees. So what we're gonna do here is create a mask on the layer first, okay? And, and if, you, if you're new to masking, um, just think of it like this. Masking is really simple. So think of your images as layers in Photoshop, okay? And if we want to paint in or paint out a certain effect, a mask is kind of like poking a hole through one of the layers. And if you poke a hole through the layer, you can paint in certain portions of the layer below it. And what's nice about Photoshop is if you go too far, you can paint with a black brush and paint out certain bits of the original layer. So that's all masking is, is just poking holes through layers and bleeding through to other images on the bottom and painting in and out certain portions of it. So masking is actually really powerful, but it's really simple as well. So what we're gonna do here, instead of just painting, we're gonna create a gradient mask. So the gradient tool is over here, okay? And the way a gradient works is basically just a big soft transition. Um, now, if you see over here, these little boxes to the left, uh, if, you hold, if you click the X key, you can change it from white to black or black to white. Now, if you remember what I told you in the last lesson, the way masking works is black hides the effect and white reveals the effect. So since we want to go from top to bottom, we want our gradient mask to go from white to black, right? Because we want to reveal the effect up here and then start to hide it on the bottom. So we're going to want to click X on our keyboard to make this white to black. And if you hold shift on your keyboard, you can make sure that the line of the gradient is completely vertical, completely straight. So let's go ahead and, oh, whoops, I actually messed up there. Let me hit Command Z. So let's hold shift. We're going to go ahead and draw the straight line down. And it might be hard for you to see the line, but I'm gonna draw it pretty long. And then if I let go, you can see that created the transition. So if, if, if you're having trouble seeing this, 
let's go ahead and hold our Option key, and let's click on the mask. So this is what we're basically working with here. This white and black is certain portions of the mask. So this is where the, the effect is taking place. And then there's a, a transition here in the gray area. And then it's slowly, gradually going into the black area where the effect is no longer taking place. So pretty much this is the sky in the light leak area where we wanted it. And then it ends up going away completely here in the black. So let's go ahead and hold Option and click the mask again. Okay, so that's what we did there. So you can see if we flick it off, and on, it's only affecting that top portion of the image, which is what we wanted, because we really want uh, that top portion to get gradually, I guess, kind of softer focus and more of a, a dappled lighting effect. Now, I don't think 100% of it needs to be there, so I'm gonna take the opacity of this layer, which is just the percentage of the layer, and I'm gonna lower it. So let's lower it to maybe 60 something percent. We'll say 66%. And let's hit it off and on, off, and on. So I think that looks nice. Now, you're, you might be wondering why I'm doing this. Let, let me kind of give you my thought process. So the way this image is set up with these big dominant bamboo trees right in the foreground, kind of leading your eye up to the sky. Naturally, because I shot this with a wide angle lens, everything was pretty much in focus. And I think that can be a little confusing because there's so much going on in this image. There's leaves and bamboo sticks everywhere that I really wanted to control the eye flow of the image for my viewers. I wanted to control the way the eye worked their way through it. Obviously, you know, you're, you can only assume that the eye is gonna travel from the foreground all the way up the bamboo trees, but I don't like that the sky was just as sharp as the bottom. So adding this soft focus effect uh, from the HDR preset in the collection, it's just kind of making it a little less you know, it's not really making it blurry, but it's making it a little softer and kind of glow a little bit. So that way on the bottom, it's noticeably sharper. And then at a certain point, it just gradually blends into the sky. So really it's a more natural looking image now, instead of everything just being so over the top sharp. So that's my process behind that. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do now is, let's see, uh, I kinda wanna make the light a little more intense. So right now we, we took the light that was already there and we just kinda made it a little blurry and kind of a soft focus. But I wanna actually intensify some of the light, kinda like what we did in lesson one. So that means I need to go back into the Nick collection. But there's a problem here. So which, which image, which layer do I take into the Nick collection, right? If I took this one, then it would only take the original layer. But if I take this one, then it's only gonna take half of a layer. It's really gonna take a 60% mask. So there's no one layer that I have to take into Nick Collection right now. So let, let me tell you how to overcome this. So there's two ways to really do this. Number one, which is just the, the way most people think, is we could select both of these layers and we could uh, hit Command E on our keyboard and it just merges them into one layer. And now they're at 100% opacity and we could go up into filters up here and we could go into Nick Collection and you know we, we could do our thing. But the issue is, if at a later point I want to come back here and make changes to that mask with this little soft focus effect in the top, I can't do that now because I've just merged my mask into one layer, so I can't make changes. So let's hit Command Z to undo what I just did there. So what's, what's nice is, we really need to make one single layer out of the layers that already exist. So let's go ahead and uh, select these here. Let's shift select these and let's go ahead and make a group. So we're gonna put these in a group by hitting Command G on the keyboard. And I'm gonna name my group as I always do, post, uh, if I could spell that would be nice, post processing, okay? And all of my layers are basically going to end up in this group. So here's what's nice, okay? Right now, uh, these layers are all in this group and we need to still create a layer out of everything that's been done so far. So it's kind of a crazy keyboard shortcut. I call it kind of an everything layer, if you will. So you hit Command Option, Shift and E, and you can see this new layer popped up, and this one layer contains all of the effects from this group of layers here. So even if there were like 50 layers inside of this group, it would still just be one single layer with all those effects built into it. And you can do this at any time. That way you can keep your masks and everything in here intact, and you can make these changes later. Okay, so, um, let's see. I think I wanna go back into Nick Collection, and I wanna go into Color Effects Pro. Let's go to Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro. And I wanna work on the sunlight preset to make things just a little more intense for the light. So it's already preloaded from the last lesson, so let's just get rid of it for a second because we wanna do new settings. So let's uh, select sunlight here. 
And again, remember, we're just really focusing on the top portion of the image. We're not really focusing on the bottom right now because I'm really just focusing on where the light is coming in. So I think it actually looks pretty good right now. We might add some light strength, take that up a little bit. And we might add some contrast. And then I don't want to take away saturation. So instead of negative 10, I'm just gonna make this zero because I don't want to take it away, but I don't want to add it either. Okay, so I think that looks good. Again, it's subtle if you just look at the sky where we're gonna be adding it, but I think it's necessary. Uh, I think it really intensifies that little dappled light and adds some nice contrast and it just softens it up a bit. So let's uh, hit okay down here. And remember the, um, the Nick Collection Color Effects Pro does create an, its own separate layer. So after we have this Nick Collection layer, we can actually delete that everything layer that we made because we don't really need it anymore. Nick Collection created its own layer for us. The only reason we created that everything layer was just to get to the Nick Collection step. So we can take this layer that we made and delete it, and now we have our Nick Collection effect. So here's what's cool. What we can do is we want it added, if we open up the group, here's that, um, the HDR layer. So let's go ahead and name this. Let's name this uh, HDR uh, Soft, I think we had, what was the filter called? Soft Light or something like that. So let's name it HDR Soft Light, and we want the sunlight layer up here that we just did in Nick Collection, we want it to affect the exact same amount uh, of the image from this layer here. So if we go here to the sunlight layer, we can create a mask. We want this mask to be the exact same mask as this layer. So if you select the mask from the HDR layer that we did earlier, you hold the Option key and you drag that mask on top of this mask, it'll ask you, do you want to replace layer mask? You click yes and boom, now the masks are identical from layer to layer so that we're affecting the exact same portion of the image. Yet again, I'm gonna blend it in with the opacity. I don't want you know the full percentage of the effect. But yet again, I think it added a nice little uh, bump to the, the contrast and the, the interest and the drama and the light. So let's just flick it off and on, off and on. So see, it's, we're still, we keep building on this nice area here. Uh, on top, and I think it's really beneficial for us to do that because we keep adding more interest to the light up here instead of it just being these blown out, you know, white blobs like it was when we first started. Okay, so now um, I think I want to just add some overall global contrast to the image. So there's a few ways we're going to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag this. By the way, now that we have this done, we can go and drag this into the group. Okay, so now everything, if we collapse that. All of our post-processing work is inside of this group. And let's go ahead and add a, um, a contrast, a brightness and contrast layer right here. And we'll just add some contrast globally to the whole image. Um, sure, 18% looks okay. Let's just say we're okay with that. And then uh, let's work on color for a minute. So I think we really need to bring more of the greens out, some, some of the natural greens. So let's also add another adjustment layer called hue and saturation. And here we can take the hue of the colors and kind of cool them off a little bit and add some more cool tones and some greens back into them. So let's just do 6% to the hue and then we'll start to saturate a good bit. Okay, we'll crank up the saturation slayer maybe, uh, or the saturation slider, sorry, uh, to about 13 to 15%, something like that looks good. Okay, and that really just, you know, bumped the greens. Look at this, before and after, and before and after. So that's really nice greens here, but I really don't like that it, it also made the top portion green, which kind of needs to be more warm in my opinion, because this is where the sunlight is coming in. And you just kind of, you know, I think the, the brain kind of naturally expects the shadows to be a little less saturated and you know kind of more drabby green colors from the bamboo and then as you get to the sun and the more intense light it needs to be a little warmer in color so i don't like that this is affecting everything but i am going to leave it global right now and i'm going to show you a nice way to just warm the top portion up so let's leave the green uh, global right now we're going to add another adjustment layer called photo filter so let's click photo filter and this has a few options. So if you choose the uh, drop down box here in the photo filter, you can add warming filters, you can add you know, oranges, reds, yellow, green, you can add a bunch of different kind of colors over the whole image. So I'm just gonna use the warming filter 85. And the further you go with the density, the warmer in tones the whole image will get. So let's, um, I don't know, maybe stop about somewhere around 40. Let's just manually type that in, 40%. 
okay? And you want to preserve luminosity, by the way. Make sure that box is checked. So let's say 40% is good, okay? We'll collapse this little box here. But yet again, we only want that warming filter on the top portion of the image. So hopefully you've guessed what we can do now. We can select that same gradient mask that we've been using over the top. We can hold option and we can drag it over the photo filter. Replace mask and there you go. So now if we flick the photo filter up here off and on, look at that color difference. It really starts to gradually get warm up there. I think that's a little too warm. So yet again, we can take the opacity down to about 75, maybe 70%, somewhere around there. Okay, we'll just manually type that in, 70%. And if I go off and on, off and on, you can see, Yet, yet again, very subtle, and you're probably gonna hear me use the word subtle about a million and one times in this tutorial. It's like my favorite word to use while I'm post-processing, but uh, that's what it is. They're just very, you know, I work very conservatively so that at the end, all of these very subtle and conservative layers end up making a big change. So I like that. It's, it's not too noticeable, but it's, it's powerful. It really adds that warm light close to the sun. So let's just, uh, we're gonna add a couple more changes here, but let's just see what we've done so far. Let's collapse this, let's, this group. And here's the HDR image that came in from Lightroom. So this is what we started with in Lightroom after we blended the HDR. And then here's where we are now. So it's actually a, a pretty big jump from what we've done or from, from what we started with, but I still want to focus a little more on the bottom portion, adding interest to that and adding some contrast and just some, some overall toning to the image. So what we're gonna do at this point is um, add a blur layer. Now, again, I need one single layer to do this and all these are you know, masked layers. So I need to create another everything layer. So that little crazy shortcut that we did earlier with the command option, shift and E, that creates me one single layer out of everything. And we'll go up to filter and blur. We'll go into the Gaussian blur option. And you can blur this as much as you want. Uh, it really depends on the megapixels of your image, but you want it pretty blurry like this. So I'm gonna leave it at about 35%. I'm gonna click okay. And let me show you the issue that comes up before we do this. So what, what I'm going to do in just a minute is take the blending mode on this from normal to multiply. But look at the issue. So it looks cool, okay, don't get me wrong. It looks kind of cool and, and weird, but uh, it's, it's made everything way too dark. So what we need to do to our blur layers before we blend them let's go ahead and take it back to normal, is we need to just bump the exposure on this a crazy amount. So we need to open Camera Raw real quick. It's just a little plugin inside of Photoshop. If you hold Command, Shift, and A, that will open up Camera Raw really quickly. And we can just bump the exposure of that blurry image. I'm gonna bump it, I don't know, somewhere almost two stops, okay? And then we'll just click OK. And now this time, since we brightened it so much, we can take the uh, blending mode to multiply. And this time it won't be quite as dark. It still darkens it, but look, it's, it's much, more, much more natural now. So I'm really focusing on global, you know, the whole global image this time. I'm not really focusing on uh, just the top. I really kind of want some more contrast in the bottom, but this is too dark. So let's take the opacity down into the 60s somewhere around here, 61%. If we go off and on, you can see it's a, it's a really big, I mean, it's a, it's a big change, but I just wanna selectively paint it in. So I take that back. I, I don't think I want it global. I wanna paint it in in certain spots. Um, so I'm gonna leave it global at 61%, but I'm gonna selectively paint out certain portions. So what I need to do is create a mask down here, a white mask, and then hit B on the keyboard to get my brush. And anytime you're, you have a color, you know, a white mask, and you want to paint the effect out. Well, you guessed it. You want to make sure over here your box is black. So you want to paint with a black brush. And your opacity up here is going to control how much of that effect you want to paint out. So let's paint out 60% uh, of that effect. And then my flow is going to stay on 15 so that it's a very soft and easy brush. Okay, very subtle transitions here. Um, and let's just work on the shadows. So I'm just gonna start painting in the shadows and opening those up a little bit. Because I think they're a little too crisp uh, with that glow effect that we did. But I like it, I like it everywhere else. I'm just gonna open up the shadows. So I'm gonna make a little bit, my brush a little bit smaller and just work in here on some of the shadows. And I don't wanna open them all the way. It, it's good for the photo to have contrast like that, to have some of the shadows kind of a deeper black and some of them be a little more open but I'm just opening them up a little bit because I think they were a little too dark. So I'm just gonna focus on certain portions here. 
Okay, and in further lessons, you'll see me do this with a, a dodge and burn layer. So we'll get into that in a few lessons here. But this is a really nice way to do this image. Okay, so let's say that's pretty good. And if you hold Option and click on the mask, you can see what we did. So it's kind of funky looking, but that's kind of all of our brush strokes. So you can see we just kind of, you know, little bits here and there, we just dappled some of the, the, uh, the effect out in the shadows. We just kind of randomly selected certain areas and that's what our brush looks like. So the black hides the effect and the white reveals it. So you can see the effect is, is active on most of the image. It's just we painted out certain portions down here. So if you hold Option and click on the mask again, it'll get, get us back here. And I think we need to work a little bit more in the corners and on the very bottom of the image. Because so that's, I, just, I don't know, I don't want those to be too dark. I don't, I don't want it to look too much like a vignette. So I'm really gonna work on the bottom portion here for a minute. Okay, on some of the edges. Okay, I think that is looking pretty good. So we'll just go ahead and drag this back into the group now. Drop and drag, boom. I love having these groups. It keeps everything organized for me. So let's, I'm gonna be a good example here. Okay, let's stop and let's let's start naming these. So uh, this is our brightness and contrast layer, but we only added contrast. So I'm just gonna name this, uh, let's name it global contrast. Okay, and we'll go up here. This is our hue and saturation. So we'll just name this uh, hue slash sat green, okay because that was where we affected the green color. The photo filter was that warming tone on the top, so we'll just name it warm uh, top. And what we just did here was the blur layer. So we'll just name this blur contrast, because that's kind of what I do with that layer. I just kind of subtly add some contrast. Okay, so blur contrast. Uh, warm top, saturation, we have everything named and organized. We have our post-processing folder. We can collapse that and everything is good there. So uh, there are a few other things we could do with this. Yet, you know, again, I'm gonna say this a million times. We, we're gonna learn new tips and techniques as we get further on. And as you learn new stuff, you can always come back to these raw files and make different changes. And you can, you can do something completely different than I did if you want to. You can apply something you learn in lesson six or seven back to lesson one or two if you want to. You can just have fun with this. That's why I'm giving you the raw files so you can always refer back to them and make different creative changes based on what you think looks good, not just me. Because we're, you know, we're all very different creatively. So uh, my last step in my workflow at this point is sharpening. And obviously I don't want to sharpen everything because we've worked, uh, we worked about the first few minutes on this photo making sure the top portion was not as sharp as the bottom. So we definitely don't want to sharpen everything. So yet again, we need a uh, an everything layer. So command, option, shift, and E will create us a layer out of everything that we've done so far. We'll go to filter, other, and high pass. This is my favorite way to sharpen. And on this, I'm gonna sharpen a good bit. Normally I sharpen about two to two and a half pixels. I'm gonna go four pixels on this. We'll choose okay. And then remember the way to make this active is to change the blending mode from normal to overlay. And now everything is sharpened. So right now that looks terrible because all of that soft focus blur effect that I've added to the top has just been kind of mushed with sharpening now. So that looks terrible up there. So I think I'm gonna paint this in selectively. So if we hold uh, Option and click the masking tool down here, it creates a black mask. And remember, black hides everything. So that sharpening effect just completely went away. But if we click B on our keyboard for the brush and we paint with a white brush, well now we're gonna start revealing the sharpening effect just in the selected areas that we're gonna paint. So let's go up here to the opacity and let's change this to 80% because I'm gonna paint in 80% of the sharpening effect and I'm really just gonna focus on uh, the main areas of the bamboo trees here and maybe little bits in the leaves, but I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna basically keep the sharpening away from the top two thirds up here, okay? So let's just start painting. I'm gonna paint these big trees here. We'll paint, we'll just kind of pull down. I like to, sometimes I just like to, to have one brush stroke and just kind of pull down with it. So that way I'm making sure I'm not adding too much because with the flow turned at 15%, the longer you stay in one area, the more effect it will add. So I'm just gonna run over some of these areas and just yet again, be really careful that I'm not hitting that top portion of the image. I do not want it in that little glowy sunlight area, but I definitely want it on the bottom and corners. You always want your corners as sharp as possible, especially if you print a lot like I do. That is very important to have corner to corner sharpness. 
Except in this photo, the top corners aren't going to be quite as sharp, but that's fine because remember, it's, it's a natural effect that we're making with the sky there. Okay, and in all reality, with these prints, you know, most of the time the corners aren't going to be showing anyway. They're going to be in a frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and hold Option and look at our mask. And that's what it looks like right now. So we've sharpened a large portion, but we've stayed away from that little top area here. So that's looking good. So let's hold Option again, click the mask. And I'm going to zoom in here by clicking Command plus sign on my uh, keyboard here. And I'm going to paint out. So I'm going to uh, click the X key to go back to a black brush, which is going to paint out the sharpening again. And I'm going to paint it out on this little light area because it's creating a little bit of a weird halo with this little light leak right here because it's a pretty big light leak. So we'll just paint the sharpening out of there to get rid of that weird halo. Okay. And you can see that, by the way, if you hold Option again and go back into the mask, this little thing right here, that little black stroke, that's that little light leak that we just painted out. So you can always, if, if you don't really know and you can't see well enough where you're painting, you can always uh, option click the mask and just reassure yourself of what you're doing. Because you, you'll always know that white is selected, you know, the white is the, the effect active and black is hiding the effect. So we'll hold option again, click to get back, and there we are. So I think I've added sharpening where I want to add it. Um, yet again, I think that it, it's, it's really nice that we opened up some of the shadows here while still adding contrast. And what's nice is, since we've built everything on masks, which by the way, we can go ahead and drag this sharpen layer into the group, and we'll go ahead and name that to just stay true to our organization. We'll name it High Pass Sharpen. There you go. And that's it. So that's everything we've done. So what, what I was about to say was what's nice is since everything is built on masks for the most part, we can always go back and make changes. So at this point, I'm actually kind of seeing that there's kind of a little too much of a, of a defined line. I think I'm seeing too much of a, you know, a, I guess, evidence of where I've messed with the top part of the image. So I might want to go back to the, um, the sunlight area here and just crank down the opacity a little more. And same thing with the uh, warming filter here, that, the warm top, and we'll crank that down just a little bit. And that's the beauty of these masks is that it's a very non-destructive workflow and we can just you know, figure everything out at the end and just add everything in little bits and pieces. So we'll crank that back to collapsed. And I'm gonna go back into Lightroom, okay? Give me a second here. And we're gonna get the original image that we had here. So let's go here, this is our one, and we'll hit Command E to open this one up in Photoshop. And I just wanna do a quick uh, comparison here, okay, of the very original image. So let's, uh, let's just get this one back into the project we're working with here. I'll drag it on the bottom, okay? And this is what we started with. So this right here is the original raw file with before we even blended the HDR together in Lightroom, okay? This is literally the raw file right out of the camera. And then this is what we did to it right there. So big difference. I mean, I, I think it, it looks worlds better from the start and it's amazing what you can do with these great software tools. So you can see we even, this is the file that doesn't even have the distortion uh, or the, the profile corrections. That's why there's a little movement there. So it's nice. I love that we enhance the light. We enhance the color, the contrast. So there's before and after and before and after. It's really amazing what you can do to really get the most out of these raw files. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I hope you learned a lot of new tips and tricks, and I will see you in lesson three.